Chinese phone manufacturers are becoming very aggressive these days, especially in budget segment. As the dual camera is a thing now, following that market trend, Mizu have recently launched their version of dual camera warrior in this battle, the Mizu M6 Note. Hey what is going on everyone, TechRats here and in this video, I'm going to talk all good and bad about this phone and also the most hyped feature, that dual camera on the back. So go grab some popcorn and enjoy the full video. Before jumping into the video, I'm about to hit 1000 subscribers. Please subscribe to my channel guys and help me to reach that number. Well, this is the retail packaging with a bunch of Chinese writing here and there that I don't really understand. Opening it up, first you will see the phone. You can easily tell by looking at the front that it's a Mizu device. At a first glance, the design and build seems quite promising. Let's put that aside for a while and check out the other stuff. Here is the same injection tool, some paperwork all written in Chinese micro USB cable, no type C here unfortunately, and the 18 watt power adapter that supports Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0. Before deep down inside, let's quickly give you a physical overview. The Mizu M6 Note has a full aluminum chassis and the front glass is 2.5D curved which blends perfectly with the aluminum and feels solid in the hand but I don't really like the ergonomics. The 8.5mm thick design is boxy and it makes the phone feel more wider than it is. The design wise it's just fine but I was expecting something more refreshing. Ok up the front there is all the necessary sensors followed by the earpiece and a 16 megapixel selfie camera. I'll be showing the quality in a minute. The display is 5.5 inch IPS panel which covers 71% of the front. And on the lower side the fingerprint sensor is embedded in this only button. Speed wise it's fast and works in any direction as you can see but you have to press the button every time you want to unlock the phone. It's a bit annoying. Moving towards the right, it has the power button just below the volume rocker. On the left, the hybrid SIM slot that accepts either 2 nano SIM or single SIM and a micro SD card slot up to 256GB. And up top, only the secondary microphone and on the bottom, the 3.5mm jack, primary microphone, micro USB port for fast charging and a speaker that gets very loud. And on the back, the phone's most highlighted features is dual camera setup alongside the dual tone core LED flash. So build quality wise, this phone checks pretty much all the boxes, but I still prefer its bigger rival Mi A1 in terms of ergonomics. Talking about that display, it has got 5.5 inch full HD IPS panel with a pixel density of 403 pixel per inch. Color and contrast is good enough to let you enjoy your multimedia, touch latency is very minimal and with the 415 nits of brightness, the display is visible outdoor too, but in direct sunlight, you may find it a bit hard to see. Honestly, this is not the best display I have seen so far, but don't forget that you are paying just 185 bucks for the device. Now, it's time to talk about the most appealing feature of this device, the dual camera on the back. Though it's their first attempt to take part in this dual camera game, Meizu took it pretty seriously. They used the bigger 12 megapixel f1.9 Sony IMX362 sensor and the smaller 5 megapixel f2.0 Omnivision sensor to capture better dynamic range, dual portrait, background blur, and they also claim to reduce noise in the dark with dual multi frame noise reduction technology, they say. Well, I know all those fancy marketing terms, but to be honest, it really takes some great pictures in decent lighting. Especially combined with the optimized camera software, pictures seem to have good dynamic range, colors are punchy and portrait mode also works great. But in low light, it still suffers just like any other mid-budget phones. Inside the camera app, you have bunch of shooting modes too, slow motion, panorama and even the pro shooting mode to control everything manually. For all the selfie lovers, there is a 16 megapixel f2.0 front facing face detection camera can take some good photos that you can actually share on social media. Both the front and rear camera can record 1080p full HD video but no 4K capturing unfortunately, where some of its direct competitors have added that feature already. Even though the Mizu M6 Note comes with the Android 7.1.2 Nougat out of the box, you won't be able to tell unless you dip down into the software section, because this phone runs the Mizu's custom UI called Flame OS. This is a very heavily customized ROM with many additional features, animations are nice and fluid, icon looks a bit cartoonish to me and just like the other Chinese ROM, it doesn't have any app drawer. Overall, it's a nice UI but I have to say, it's still in its early development stage and have tons of room to improve. Most annoying thing to me was the back gesture as it doesn't have any capacity back key. It works but in a very confusing way. It comes with tons of bloatware that cannot be uninstalled. And swipe from the bottom left to bring the multitasking is a real pain in the butt. 
Moving on to the performance, this is probably the first Mizu phone sporting a Snapdragon 625 SoC combined with the Adreno 506 GPU. It comes in 3GB and 4GB of RAM and 1632 and 64GB of internal storage variant. By now, we have seen so many mid-range smartphone coming with the Snapdragon 625 chip and they perform really well. And this Mizu M6 Note is no exception. Due to its custom flame UI I guess, I have got a little less score in Geekbench 4 compared to the other phones running the same chip but the difference isn't too noticeable. It runs through UI very smoothly and handles multitasking very well with 4GB of RAM and during gameplay I didn't notice any hiccups. It crushes the small games like Subway Surfer and also performs very well while playing high intense games like Modern Combat 5. As you can see it runs like butter and it doesn't get hot even with intense use. To me that's the best part. But nothing matters if the device fails to provide enough juice to run those features. Don't worry, Mizu doesn't disappoint us here. With a whopping 4000mAh battery inside, this phone is a beast in terms of battery life. It can get you through 2 days easily if you are an average user. And even if you are an intense user like me, you will find it hard to kill the battery in a single day. As it supports fast charge up to 18W with the included adapter, it takes about 1 hour and 45 minutes to be fully charged. So no complaint here. Overall, it's a very capable device and can give a tough competition to the other mid-range smartphones like Mi A1, especially with that dual camera and great battery life. So if these two things matter to you most and Flame UI doesn't bother you much, then just go for it. Else there are some great options like Moto G5 S Plus and even the Mi A1. I already have done a full review of the A1, I'll be giving the link in the description in case you were interested. Well that's it for today guys, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please smash that like button and write down your thoughts in the comment section. You can also let me know if you are interested to see a head to head comparison between me A1 and this device. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next episode, peace out.